this edition of Spotlight Morris County, the program that brings you news and information from the greater Morris County area. Students on campus, members of the community, people doing good things. I'm your host, Brenda Todd, and today I'm pleased to have as our guest Professor Peter McGuire. Professor McGuire is an English professor here at CCM, and he is here to tell us about a project he's involved with, the County College of Morris Peace Prize. Professor, welcome. Thank you very much, Brenda. Pleasure to be here. What can you tell us about the Peace Prize? Well, uh, to introduce it a little bit, I can say that, of course, we as professors teach our students in the classroom to help them uh, develop a variety of skills so that they can become successful in their, in their later careers. But I think we also have uh, an opportunity to broaden their horizons and maybe give them something to think about as to what their place in the world might be, how they relate to their fellow men, and uh, this Peace Prize emanated or emerged out of, out of that thought in my mind as to how we could do something to challenge our students. This is the 17th annual Peace Prize, it right? It is, it is. Right. Now, were you here from the very beginning? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm proud to say it was an idea that I uh, came to uh, back in, I guess it was the year 2001, of course, yes, yeah. shortly after the tragedy of September 11th. Here I am driving to campus one day, and I heard on the radio the announcement of the Nobel Peace Prizes, which are awarded, of course, every year, among other, among other prizes. And as I'm driving toward the campus, uh, I, I just had a, a, a brainstorm or, or a thought that, hey, of course we have a Nobel Peace Prize, which is one of the most prestigious awards uh, any man or woman can, can earn. But then I thought, here we are, a college, hey, w why not think about having a Peace Prize which the County College of Morris could sponsor and, and, and offer. So I began to give it more thought, talked to a few administrators about it. Mm -hmm. They were enthusiastic about it. They asked me to develop a whole profile or program uh, and the process you know, by which it would be conducted, which I did. And uh, lo and behold, after a couple of months, we had an agreement and an arrangement that the college would award this on an annual basis at commencement. And as, a, uh, as an incentive for students to participate, the County College of Morris would provide a $1,000 check or a $1,000 award to the recipient. And in addition to that, I contacted our graphics design department and the chairman of that department. And she uh, gave, as one of her assignments to her students, the creation of a trophy, uh, which is also awarded to each recipient annually. So yes, we are in our 17th year. We've had so many wonderful projects. The amount of participation has varied from year to year. I sometimes thought that as we got further from 2001 and, and the tragedy of 9-11, there might be less interest. But every year, something happens in the world that recharges you know, my energies about this and, and I think provides some motivation for students to see that we have a long way to go, right. but one of the first steps is just having a vision of how we can possibly bring about a more peaceful world. Right. And that peace is always a good cause. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, so what are the projects then that, that are involved? You're, you're an English professor, so mm -hmm. are these writings? Are they poems? Are they? Um... It, it really, the sky's the limit. Uh, I've always tried to uh, make it clear that any kind of project can be considered for the Peace Prize. In fact, one of the most remarkable, this was in year two, I, I don't have a photographic memory of everything, but uh, in year two, a student in the la horticulture, the landscape design department, designed what I thought was a magnificent garden of peace, which was to have been a place on campus, a small area, where students could go to reflect and, and think. It was beautiful. Uh, but she did not win the Peace Prize that year. Coincidentally, as I recall, the, the winner that year was a student in, I think, the journalism or the photography department mm -hmm. who had as her job uh, working in a station that did the, tele the, the traffic reports by helicopter. 
And on this particular day, September 11th, she was sent up in the helicopter to get a bird's eye view of the things she was reporting from the ground. And lo and behold, she was up in the air. She wasn't the pilot, but she was up in the helicopter in and around lower Manhattan. And so she got some spectacular photographs. But she combined the photographs with some writing about her experience of actually being witness to what was happening at that part of lower Manhattan. So, you know, we have 17 years of, of projects. The last few have been videos because students are very much into social media. So I think three out of the last five have been videos, but they've been combined with art and music. And I'm trying to think what another one was, poetry as well. So students have been, you know, very creative uh, over the years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And are these usually individual projects or group projects? They are, uh, mm -hmm. mostly individual, although, you know, one year I got a question, could students work together on a project? Mm -hmm. And a couple of years ago, so two, two students did. They created a, uh, a work of art, a mural, which is now, in fact, uh, available for people to see. It's, it's in between, it's in the corridor between uh, Sheffield and De Mayer Hall. So that is one thing that is even on display hopefully for, for many, many years to come. I pointed out to, to my students when I talk about the Peace Prize that you can actually see what someone did. So is there a website or something that we can go on to see past projects, past winners? As of, as of now, there is no website. Uh, of course, I have, uh, I have a collection of them all. Uh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. But as I said, for the last three out of five years, uh, in particular, even even last year, the students are putting their, their projects up on YouTube. So when the announcement of the recipient is made right. to everyone uh, at the college, uh, that, that happens in May, we give them the link to, so that anyone can see the winning Peace Prize project. And who are the judges? The judges, uh, we used to have uh, six or seven of them, but some have retired from, from their positions. But, but as of now, uh, some of the judges include the current president of the college, mm -hmm. the current chairperson of the Board of Trustees, the president of the County College of Morris Foundation, one of our sociology professors, and we also have the president of the College of St. Elizabeth. Uh, as I said, I used to have more, a couple uh, of other distinguished judges but some of them have retired uh, or decided they can, because of their commitment, they could no longer afford the time, although it, it doesn't take much, much time. But some of them just felt that they were overwhelmed by their other responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But I think five is sufficient. I do. Okay. I, ha I have no role, right. and I would not want to be uh, one of those judges. I'm, I'm just the administrator of the whole thing. I would want to be, because some of them, it's just, we've had votes that it was a one point difference be bet. between the winning project and, and the runner up and yeah. and one year we had co winners or recipients oh, so they wow. i think they did they each receive they might have each received five you know half right. of that check right well we'll hear more about this okay. um, we're going to take a short break uh, stay tuned and we'll be back in a minute good not all county college of morris students look like me some look like me. Or me. Or me. Or me. We all come to CCM at different stages of life. And for different reasons. I plan to transfer to a university. I'm training for a new career as a nurse. But we all know one thing. CCM is where we want to be. So check out the website. Check out the website. Check out the website. And let CCM connect learning and your life. We're back on Spotlight Morris County with Professor Peter McGuire. Now we're going to take a look at some of the CCM Peace Projects from the past few years.
Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes or in their offices, secretaries, businessmen and women, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat. But they have failed. Our country is strong. A great people has been moved to defend a great nation. Terrorist attacks can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. These acts shatter steel, but they cannot dent the steel of American resolve. America was targeted for attack because we're the brightest beacon for freedom and opportunity in the world. And no one will keep that light from shining. Today, our nation saw evil, the very worst of human nature. And we responded with the best of America, with the daring of our rescue workers, with the caring of, for strangers and neighbors who came to give blood and help in any way they could. Immediately following the first attack, I implemented our government's emergency response plans. The functions of our government continue without interruption. Federal agencies in Washington, which had to be evacuated today, are reopening for essential personnel tonight and will be open for business tomorrow. Our financial institutions remain strong, and the American economy will be open for business as well. The search is underway for those who are behind these evil acts. I've directed the full resources of our intelligence and law enforcement communities to find those responsible and to bring them to justice. We will make no distinction between the terrorists who committed these acts and those who harbor them. I appreciate so very much the members of Congress who have joined me in strongly condemning these attacks. And on behalf of the American people, I thank the many world leaders who have called to offer their condolences and assistance. America and our friends and allies join with all those who want peace and security in the world and we stand together to win the war against terrorism tonight i ask for your prayers for all those who grieve for the children whose worlds have been shattered for all whose sense of safety and security has been threatened none of us will ever forget this day yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just our world. Thank you. Good night. And God bless America. I hear the speeches of Martin Luther King behind the cries of children across the globe. I hear the voice of John Lennon harmonizing with the blast of the bombs. I hear the teachings of Gandhi and the sound of breaking glass, glittering glass, and I see peace immersed in the pieces of rubble left behind. I hear I have a dream in the actions of young activists acting, searching, looking for and finding love inside of hate, finding flowers growing between cracks in the concrete.
Imagine all the people living life in peace, persevering through smoke, seeing endless amounts of light at the end of what seemed to be an endless amount of tunnels. The next and last stop is World Trade Center. When will we find the light that is brewing in the eyes of poets, blossoming in the voices of teachers and educators, being illustrated in the paint strokes of artists, born into the hands of nurses? I offer you peace. I offer you love, we are blooming. Don't lay bricks over this garden, don't build walls to keep in hate. There is blood coming out of our cracked palms, dry palms driving shovels into soil that one person made a decision some people didn't deserve to walk on. How can we change? We cannot refuse to acknowledge the men and women who came before us, walked this soil, immigrants, slaves, Native Americans, we are one. We cannot refuse to acknowledge the men and women who continue to walk this soil today. Hispanics, African Americans, Muslims, we are one. There is no peace without love. There is no peace without acceptance. We must remember those who have fallen, facing hate and anger in the guise of fire and pain. We must stand in front of a backdrop of red, white, and blue and let peace into our country, not force it out. I hear the speeches of Martin Luther King. He's crying. I hear the voice of John Lennon. He's singing. I hear Gandhi. I have a dream. I imagine all the people sharing all the world world where we can become the change we wish to see. Tolerance and patience towards all. Love is kind and understanding keeps no record of wrongs if we are to change the world and bring true peace and unity as far as the west is from the east before we can change the world we must change ourselves one act of kindness at a time and learn to be the change you want to see and encourage others to do the same and all else will of the world behaves as if they have no clue is it just pride and negligence that's brought us where we are in constant competition to see who can and who cannot if we are to change the world we must change ourselves one act of kindness at a time like animals over the most significant conflicts available to show compassion to your enemies action and cowardice humility is weak what does the world come to whatever happens so i love you regardless of past deeds always something to prove this ideology we're trapped and we cut from the same fabric and yet we 
all lack of passion The truth is, only through patience and understanding Can a healthy relationship dwell between us And all of the countries forgive and move on Allow the future to carry me Don't focus on the differences, rejoice the similarities Cause at the end of the day, we are all after it Peace of mind in the continual pursuit of happiness United we stand, united we fall Regardless if it's the Bible, the Torah, or the Quran I'm not saying it's easy to justify the wrongs But in order to heal, we gotta swallow pride and move on not arguments or complicated politics, but in the hearts of individuals who believe that real change, yes, a real change is possible. And learn to be the change you want to see, and encourage others. We're back on Spotlight Morris County with Professor Peter McGuire and the CCM Peace Project. Professor McGuire, how do students get involved in this and what is the timeline and the deadline each year for um, submission for the Peace Project? Well, uh, in the first week of the spring semester, I typically send an email out to all of our teaching faculty here, full and part time, and that's, that's a number of about 450 people. And I uh, asked them if they have a moment early in the semester to inform the students about the Peace Prize. And I give them a little information about it. Uh, I think that's a, a good way for students to hear some information about the Peace Prize. And if anybody, any student has any interest, they can then contact me. Okay. And I can give them a, a more complete description of the entire program right. and how the process works. Right. They will know that in early March, maybe the first week of March, They've got to just file an application so I know about how many people might be participating. In the first week of April, their projects are due. And uh, shortly thereafter, I put them together and present all the projects to all the judges and, and give them a certain amount of time, a few weeks, to look, every th look them over and to right. evaluate them and to cast their ballots for which one they think is the most deserving. And the award is then presented at commencement. And in fact, I tell the students, uh, in addition to the graduates who receive their degrees individually on stage from the, from the president, the recipient of the County College of Morris Peace Prize is the only other student who was invited to the stage to receive the acknowledgment of, of those in attendance. Uh, so it's relatively simple. Uh, I'm, I'm always curious as to how many students will, will respond. Right. How many students do you usually get? I would say on average over the last maybe 10 years, the average has been seven or eight. Okay. So I tell, you know, my students, if only seven students apply, you have a one in seven chance of, of winning. Absolutely. Uh, some students fill out the application, but they find that their time is not that plentiful and they don't have the the time to complete the project uh, so that that's understandable uh, it, it's not an easy thing to do you have to really want to do this right. and there's no cost for submission there's no cost no only any materials that they the students right. might need right. and that hasn't really been a burden from from my knowledge well wonderful what yeah. a worthwhile project yeah. and um, it looks like it's been long lasting 17 yeah, years yeah uh, you know, in addition, I forgot to mention, there's a plaque outside of the, in the student center. And each year, the name of the recipient is placed on a plate on that permanent plaque. So wow. it, that'll be here, I dare say, in perpetuity. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. 
So, Professor McGuire, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, happy to do that. Uh, I was born in New York City, and uh, trying to think, we you know we moved to to New Jersey, and uh, no, we didn't move to New Jersey yet. I'm still in I'm still in New York, and I'm applying for graduate school, uh, where I attend the, the University of Kansas, back in 1970, 1970 to 72. And I, I, rem I remember driving by, route, driving right through this area of, of Mars County. Route 80 hadn't even been finished, so I'm, I'm on Route 46, and I'm out there in Lawrence, Kansas, applying to different colleges in the, in the tri-state area. And wouldn't you know it, I wind up here at, 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 in Mars County. I had traveled right through it many, many, many times going back and forth from Kansas. So I've been here since 1972 which is quite a while. I'm, I'm probably one of the more senior faculty here, although there are a number of half a dozen who've been here even longer. So I'm, I'm a very uh, proud member of the English department. We have some very wonder, I have some very wonderful colleagues, both personally and professionally. So I've been very blessed in that regard. And you teach English composition? I have taught other courses, but I, I over the years, after doing a variety of other things, came back to teaching the mm -hmm the backbone courses of, mm -hmm. of, the, of the department. It's very time consuming. Uh, I, you know, I don't, have, I don't have classes where I have very few students that every seat is full, right. not because of me, but because those classes are very heavily uh, uh, in, uh, attended. Yes. And it's a very time consuming job. I, yes. I mean, after this interview, I'll probably go home and curl up with a, a batch of papers to read. You have to enjoy reading to be in your it, well, it is, uh, as I said, very time consuming, but I, I think worthwhile. One only hopes that it's benefiting the students, that they, they learn from their exercises and, and, their, uh, and the comments that I, I try to make in my scrawl, in my very hard to, hard to read handwriting. <laughs> so how have students changed from when you started? many years ago to where they're at now. How, how has English composition changed? How have the students changed? I wish I could put a, uh, a finger on that very, very clearly. But I, I'm going to have to say, and, and I have said to my colleagues, students are, are, are pulled now in so many more different directions than they used to be. Um, Back in, in the early, I don't, I don't think students worked as many hours as they might do now. Uh, they certainly had very busy social lives and, and other commitments. Uh, they, they work often shortly before even coming to class in the morning, depending upon their, their work hours. Uh, there's, there's still, we, there, there's still, Oh, they're, they're still struggling. I think many of them, many of them struggle with f financially and in terms of making, making ends meet. But I would have to say, the, over, the, the major difference that I and others have seen is unfortunately students are not reading as much as they, as they need to. Mm -hmm. I've often said, show me a person who reads a lot and I'll show you a person who's probably a good writer. A, a clear writer, uh, a competent writer. Show me a person who is a very good, solid writer who knows how to handle uh, a piece of writing and, and execute it well, and the chances are that person has a strong background in, uh, in a broad range of reading uh, right, right. material. So, Do you think that the ready access to information has changed the way students write? I don't think so because I think when you're talking about they're looking at fast answers, uh, they might not delve into an issue or a question right. that much. They just want to tap and get some kind of immediate uh, feedback from their uh, inquiry with their electronic devices. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. I don't know how we could live without social media. But sometimes I think it can be overwhelming. Sure. I was talking to, uh, some, I don't know whether I've done or not. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you, Professor McGuire. Um, 
And thank you for telling us about the CCM Peace Prize. If you'd like to learn more about the County College of Morris Peace Prize, you can contact Professor McGuire by emailing pmaguire at ccm.edu. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Spotlight Morris County, and we'll see you next time.